Today's reading comes from Romans 5, 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Jesus died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may you speak through me today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this amazing day of sun, of life. I pray that we go from this place, Lord Jesus, having met with you. Amen. Um, I'm the Reverend uh, Laura. I'm the vicar here. Um, if you are new here and you've not been before, you're very welcome. And, uh, and uh, it's good to see you. Today, we've got a combination of things going on. Uh, once a year, we do a gift day when uh, members of our congregation have gone away, prayed about whether they should give an extra gift towards the work that goes on here. Um, that is relevant for the regular members of the church, not for people who are visiting or others, of course. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And also, of course, it's Father's Day. So I thought, right, what am I going to do? Now, normally on a give day, we'd have someone come up and talk about give day. But I thought, actually, I'm going to combine it into my sermon. So it's got to cover all this, which will be fun. And it's a great scripture, actually, to, to kind of look at for that, because it's all about the gift of Jesus Christ, actually, that scripture, isn't it? It's all about the gift of life that God has given us. So it fits nicely, actually, in. So today, as well as Give Day, I say we have Fathers today. But today I want us not only to think of it in money terms, although, of course, I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Today we are encouraging those who have been praying, those who are part of our congregation here, to think about if they could give a special gift for the work of St. James at this particular time of year. Um, and, you know, and if you haven't today, can't do it today, you can do it over the next few weeks, that's absolutely fine. Um, we are a charity. The church is a charity. I think some people don't realize that. All the money that we use goes to the community, to the work we do, to the hardship funds, to gyms, to the youth work. You know, we are involved with changing our community. And if we weren't doing that, we would not be what I would not think that we were a, ch a church that ch preaches Jesus Christ. Because a church that preaches Jesus Christ also does the work of Jesus Christ, which is to, to go into our society and make a difference. We want to benefit other words, um, uh, others. We do God's work. Um, it's not an option to us. It's not an option. It shouldn't be. It's the mission that leads others to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we love people because we love them. Simple as that. And we bring them into the presence of God. So the money given, I just want to reassure you, the money given at St. James keeps the work going here. Um, and everything makes a difference. And the work we do here changes lives. Now, I'm going to say this year we are likely to have a £20,000 deficit in the next coming year. So I'm going to give you that information. Talk to Zoe about that. There's Zoe, here's our... Zoe, can you just stand up so they know who the treasurer is? This is our treasurer, Zoe. And on Give Day, I just want to go, amazing thank you. Zoe does more work than you can possibly imagine um, towards uh, making sure a, our accounts are, are really um, transparent, uh, keeping all our processes in place, keeping our money used in a really good way and good steward. She's an amazing, amazing treasurer to have. Um, but we want to keep on doing the outreach that we do. In fact, we have been praying well, me, Sonia, and a few of us have been praying, of course, about even what we can do more um, to actually continue the work of gyms, but also to build on the work of gyms. And, and we're thinking, what can we do, actually, to even impact our community more? So we're always thinking about ways that we can grow things to make a difference. If you don't know about the work of gyms, find out about it. Get a news link, uh, there's stuff in there, or... Um, uh, or just talk to us about it. We, on a Wednesday, we have the Sisters of Advice here. We have um, the place open. It's all free. People come in, get advice, help. Um, 
we, we, you know, we have a reflection as well as spiritual things, but there's also a cafe type thing. There's all sorts going on. So it's amazing, amazing work where we see community changed. We want to continue to do that work. Um, but we also want to continue to do the work of the youth work and the children's work and all the other stuff we do. We have so many kids clubs going on here. You know, it's amazing. Not only our Sunday club, but during the week, you know, Monday we have an our place where, um, you know, uh, those with additional needs come along and really get loved. We have our toddlers. We have our children's work on the Tuesday and Wednesday. So do ask Paul about all that stuff. Amazing stuff going on and life's changed. You know, work without faith are no, are no good. Forget it. Faith without works are also no good. We need both. Because of our faith, because of our love of Jesus Christ, we respond by loving others and making a difference. And what we believe comes out in how we love and what we do. So that's what this is about. Even if you can't give financially, please be praying. Praying as we seek grants. Praying for the finance of the work we do that it can expand and we can do more. Pray for us. Pray about um, other ways of raising enough so we can develop the mission here um, and keep changing lives. When I came here as vicar, I was asked, you know, the one thing you, you asked of me was to, one thing you said was, make, can you make it a hub of the community? We want to do outreach. We want to impact our community. And I have to say, I've been to other churches where they say something and don't mean it. You guys meant it. And it's because of all that you do and, and the work that you do that we can impact our community here. So I say thank you. Thank you that you meant that because it has made such a difference to so many lives. And we want to keep on seeing lives changed by developing the mission here and developing things we're doing and preaching the word of Jesus Christ and being people where everyone is welcome and we see lives changed. Um, I did send a letter out to all those that are regular, and there's also a copy of that letter at the back if you want to see it. On that copy of that, there are the ways that you can give. So you can transfer over for the bank. You can, lots of different ways to give. Um, you can, if you give aid, there's some gift aid envelopes at the back, and you can give in the baskets at the back there. Or you can give through the donor machine, the, the on-card machine on the door out, on the way out, and there's one that's called gift day. So please, uh, if you can, in the next couple of weeks, Put it down as gift day. We would really appreciate that, wouldn't we, Zoe? Right. Have I missed anything out there? If, yeah, I, I said that, didn't I? I did. That's true. I said there's a gift day. Yeah, gift day envelope that has got gift, which helps you gift aid. Yes, <laughs> envelope. Thank you. Okay, so even if you don't want to give aid, still put it in the give today envelope. There we go. Right, I'm with you. <laughs> we'll get there. So if you give in, in, did aid, please indicate it. Thank you. There we are. Brilliant. <laughs> you can see there we go. Um, and at the back, like I said, we have the machine. The PCC and myself discuss our spending. We seek ways we can steward well. Do ask myself, or Zoe, that's why I wanted to know who Zoe was, about finance, though. We are transparent, so please do ask us, or any, ask any of the T, uh, PCC. Um, so there is special... Um, uh, yes, I basically said whatever I wanted there, really, and gone off on one. There we are. However, there are other ways to give as well. So I want to encourage us just in our whole attitude to generosity and giving, okay? Maybe, maybe it's your time that you could give. You know, we appreciate that. And I know we bang on about needing help, but we really do need help. Maybe you really could help Paul. And I know it's a bit of a hassle getting your DBS and getting the safeguarding done, but we essentially have to do that. And obviously, we want to be transparent in safeguarding. We want to be safe in that. So you need to do those things. And you've got Jeremy and Helen over there, our safeguarding officer, who do an amazing job as well. So if you could help with the children's work, if you could help with the, the Sunday club, particularly on a, on a Sunday morning, we would really appreciate that. It makes a difference. And there are many ways you can serve. You could help Sonia at gyms. So talk to Sonia. She's not here at the moment, but there's Martine, so you can see her. Um, she'll do. <laughs> well, yeah, I say that. <laughs> or Jenny, talk to Jenny about that. Yes, <laughs> Jenny about gyms, um, about the work that goes on gyms. You might be able to get help in, in that way. Maybe you can get involved in prayer ministry. You know, Christine is at the back somewhere. I can't see her. Yes, and Rich, we train people to do prayer ministry. We'd love to have more people on prayer ministry team, wouldn't we, Christine? Yes, exactly. 
Maybe you could get involved with clearing up the coffee at the back, which is really essential um, thing uh, um, after you know at the end of the sort of service. Maybe you could go on that road and just help with clearing up on there. Or the welcome team. Talk to Chris and Caroline if you're interested in the welcome team. There they are. I can see them there. Chris and Caroline, put your hands up. There we are. Talk to them if you're interested in being a part of the welcome team. There are so many ways you can serve and help. Um, so please give or whatever you are in order that we can expand the kingdom work here. If we all do a little, it becomes a little rather than a lot, if that makes sense. Okay? And today, we are also, of course, thinking about fathers. And I was thinking about what a gift relationship is as well. Isn't relationship such the best gift? The, the gift actually that is core to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's all about relationship, isn't it? Everything is about how we engage with the world, with each other. Um, you know, maybe you could ask someone you don't know out for a coffee to get to know them. Maybe. Maybe you could get alongside someone who's struggling. Get along some, someone new that has come new to St. James. Get alongside them and just you know, chat to them. Get to know each other. Expand the welcome of St. James. This needs to be a welcoming church where everybody feels included, and that's really important. And it's not up, just up to me and Jenny. It's up to all of us to get to know each other. So make that effort. Maybe you can just ring someone you know is housebound. Let us be people who are the gift to others as well. Yeah? How can we be a gift to others? You are all incredible. I know you do lots, but, you know, it's not about that. It's perhaps being more intentional about how we get to know new people, how we get to know someone that we don't know, how we just take the time to make a phone call to find out how somebody is. Some of us, it's Father's Day, so some of us will have had and do have fathers who are a gift to us. Some of us may not have that. I'm very aware of that. All of us, of course, will have father figures in our lives. Um, I've got several wonderful father figures in my life who have really changed my life and made a difference. I wonder if you can think about those for a minute. Who's been a gift to you? Maybe you are someone who could be that for someone else. Maybe you are someone that could be that to others. Could you be like a father or mother figure to them? But let us really celebrate today. We really do celebrate the men today. We celebrate you all. Um, you know, even though you got all those bacon sandwiches and we didn't, we celebrate you. It's really important we do that, but we do in our lives and in the community here. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do, men. Thank you for being who you are, all that you do, all that you give, and thank you for being you. Thank you for all the father figures. Thank you for all the fathers. Thank you for all of you, to all of you for all you stand for, um, because it matters. In Romans 5... We are reminded of the greatest gift that has been given for us and to us, of course, aren't we? That wonderful scripture, just uh, Martin just read there. Wasn't it wonderful? That is the gift of Jesus dying and conquering death so that we can know resurrection in our life, that we can know hope in our lives. The gift of grace is so we can know the perfect Father, God the Father. Regardless of your earthly experience, you are loved by God Almighty. You are loved by God the Father. Now, Romans was written as Paul, or Saul, it's called there, Saul who became Paul, continually grows, grew in his understanding of all that he had been saved from. He, all the way through, you look all the way through the scriptures, it's almost like he goes, Oh, I'm the worst. I'm the worst, the worst. I'm the worst. It's like he gets this revelation. And it's not in a morbid, oh, I'm, I'm like a worm. Way. It's actually in a recognition of realizing just how much God loves him. You can see that through the scriptures. And he realizes, you can see all the way through the scriptures, he suddenly goes, I really know what I was saved from. I realize um, it's about his relationship with the only God the Father through Jesus Christ, isn't it? And he gets that revelation, Paul, as you read through those scriptures. See, Paul understands that Jesus saved him not only from, from the world, but from himself. Have you ever thought of that? Jesus saves us from ourselves. The, the thing that destroys us most, is it not true, is ourselves, our minds, our thoughts, our, how we look at ourselves, how we criticize ourselves. You know, the, the damage we do when we 
um, do things that, are, you know, to our bodies or stuff like that that are not good, you know, so it's stuff like that. So, you know, he understands Paul that he was saved from himself. Paul was someone who had watched as Stephen, Stephen the great martyr, was stoned for his belief in Jesus Christ. He watched on, he was part of that whole setup. He was someone who was strongly involved with the persecution and death of many Christians. That's who he was. And he was zealous for his faith. He thought he was doing the right thing, in other words. However, as soon as Saul, who became Paul, had the revelation of who Jesus was, you actually see this sudden, don't you, kind of like, literally, he's turned around and went the other way. I mean, he had a pretty amazing conversion, we know, as he was, um, wasn't he, struck blind and on the way to Damascus, and then um, God healed that and he revealed himself, and sp Jesus spoke to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me, isn't it? So he had this wonderful conversion experience, but you, he literally then turns around, which is the word repent, means to turn around, to go the other way. He went the other way, he changes so dramatically. He went from being an enemy of Christians to being one of the main leaders of the movement, movement of time. In fact, one of the greatest apostles to Gentiles ever, to non-Jews. So he changes dramatically after meeting the Lord Jesus. I always say, if you really meet the Lord Jesus, it's very hard to ever unmeet the Lord Jesus and to not be different. It really is. I know that in my own life, where I've, you know, amazing conversion, amazing time of time when you see God is God. So we can, of course, at times think we're on the right path. We can be zealous for something, and we have to be careful with that so we don't become law instead of grace. And Paul thought he was doing a good thing by getting rid of Christians. I do maintain, I think, killing, frightening, and controlling others is never God's way, first and foremost. It's never God's way. Um, you know, and Paul saw that. He changed. Jesus shows us the opposite, doesn't he, of all that stuff, by loving us so much that he would die for us. This is grace beyond measure. This is Showing the way of love to those who even hate you. Can you love those that hate you? It's hard, isn't it? This is, though, the Father's love. This is what the Father's love is. The Father just wants to embrace us and love us and bring us in. This is how we should be, and that is the example that we should be to those in our community. Even in disagreement, there should be grace. You can hold those tensions and still love each other. And what does it mean to be justified by faith? Well, famous way of putting it, of course, is uh, just as if I had not sinned. In other words, it's God looks at us and he sees his son, Jesus Christ. In other words, the cross has said it all. When Jesus dies, he took everything we have done wrong and will do wrong on the cross and opened the door for us to enter into the kingdom through faith in him. When we have faith in Jesus, that is, believe he is God, we can trust God, is the perfect father to us, can't we? He is the one who um, we look to, rely on, trust, and hope in. When we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us, then we start to have an eternal and kingdom perspective on things. This change, changes how we love how we forgive, how we allow others into our space. Do you allow others into your space? This changes us. When we really understand we can do nothing to earn God's, um, God's love, the Father's love, it is just given to us, and we accept Jesus, then we grow in a place of security, certainty, and knowledge that this is the gift that is never taken away from us. What an amazing God we have. We can be certain because Jesus promised and because his grace has no catch. Okay, grace is receiving what we do not deserve. We are, may not deserve God's love. We may even reject God. We may get things wrong all the time. But God is always wanting to know you. Okay? The Father loves us so much he gives us the choice to love him back and Jesus is the way to love God back 
That is the doorway to freedom. That is the doorway to the Father's heart. We, through our faith in him, gain access to his grace. And this is an ocean of never-ending love. And this never-ending love should change how we live and how we give. Does it change how you live and how you give? Now, when the scripture read, it says, once we have entered this door, we stand in his grace. We stand in God's love, in other words. We are embraced by the Father's arms, in other words. And his glory lives in us. How incredible. How incredible. We enter the place of eternal glory, never having to have fear or death be something we're afraid of. This earth, though, is just the training ground for heaven. It's just the training ground for heaven. Here we make our choices. We live in the now and the not yet. You know, when you suffer, and we all suffer, all of us got suffering, Jesus suffers with you, not separate from you. He took it on the cross. He's in it. And he will never let you go. How God never lets go. When we allow Jesus to be our measure, then we grow in character in hope, in integrity. It isn't what we go through, but how we trust God in it that really changes us and really changes our situations. Jesus knows it's hard, by the way. God knows it's hard. Knows that because he sent Jesus. And it shows that he had it hard. Died on a cross. Knows what it means to be hard. Knows what it is to mean to die. And Jesus will help us through even the things that seem impossible. He's always there with the promise of a kingdom that will mean all this will be sorted out one day. One day it'll all get sorted out. Honest, it will. That's what the promise is. Read the Bible. We always have more in front of us than behind of us. Have you ever thought of that? I do as you get older, you do think about that. But we will always have more in front of us than we have behind us. We have the promise of life eternal, a life where suffering will be gone. We have the Father waiting for us. I'm going to end with a a quote here from John Bunyan. John Bunyan in Pilgrim's Progress wrote this. Now, there's a character in John Bunyan. If you've not read Pilgrim's Progress, the character is called Christian. So that's the name of the person called Christian. Okay, that's part of this. And this is the highway and the wall. Now, I could see in my dream that the highway, um, that the highway Christian was to travel on was protected on either side by a wall. And the wall was called salvation. Now, Christian was burdened, and he began to run up the highway, but not without great difficulty because of the load he was carrying on his back. He ran this way until he came to a place on somewhat higher ground and where there stood a cross. A little way down from the cross, there was an open grave. And then I saw in my dream that just as Christian approached the cross, his burden became loose from his shoulders. It f- he fell from his back, came off his back, and began to roll downwards until it tumbled into the open grave to be seen no more. It's a wonderful way of looking at it, isn't it? When we go to the cross and we give it to Jesus, we should then live in resurrection, knowing that we are saved. Because of grace, we are free. We just need to hand over our burdens to Jesus. We just need to allow Jesus, and by the power of his Holy Spirit, to change us, to mold us, to help us. It's not going to be easy but it's very possible with Jesus. God's love is poured into your heart as a believer through the Holy Spirit. When we love, we change the lives around us. We need to be loving communities more than anything, more than any time, I think, in history, to change the lives around us. Love makes a difference, real love, not superficial love, real love. Jesus came because nothing was going to stop God reaching out to us, to you and me. When we are powerless, God is powerful. So God died for you, for me, for everyone in this world, and we get the choice through Jesus 
to really live it. Let us be those who reach out, make a difference, and let us become a gift to the world we live in, a gift to those in our community, a gift to each other because we know that the Father loves us. To end with, I want us um, just to have a moment of prayer, but in this moment of prayer, we're going to actually pr play a prayer, um, um, which is the Father saying how he feels about us in a prayer. It's lovely. And it's all scriptures from the Bible. You look at it and see, it's all scriptures from the Bible. And it just, uh, I hope it's just, you know, kind of just help you to draw close to God for a minute. So I'll pray, and then we'll play that prayer. Let's just ask. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you for the Father's heart, and that we can run into your arms and know that we are saved and loved and safe with you. Pour out your Holy Spirit into us, through us, and around us now. Whatever things we're holding, whatever pains we're holding, Lord Jesus, whatever things hurt at this moment in us, help us to give it to you. To know that we are loved beyond measure, regardless of our earthly situation, that you are in us, through us, around us, knowing us. Amen. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me, you live and move and have your being. For you were my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son, Jesus. 
for in Jesus my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you.